do you believe about God? We just believe that there is absolutely one God. We worship Him, Him alone. We follow the prophets, and that's it. So in the Quran, the Quran is divided into sections, we call them surahs or chapters. They are all thematic unity, giving a particular message. Whatever, whatever you know, just let's, yeah. just, what, what, what is that uh, concept? I mean, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything I can say. Really. What, what, you know. what do you believe about God? Do you think about God at all, or are you curious about Him? Uh, I mean, I guess I am curious a bit. Um, Religion, or is it uh, something you're pursuing on your own? Well, my dad is a Christian. Okay. Yeah. My mom don't really anything. Did they raise you as Christian, or uh, they took me to church? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you live with them now, or you're separate? Uh, no, I do live with them. Does Christianity interest you? Does Islam interest you? Not really anything. Not I mean, really I haven't anything. heard of Islam so, much. Well, Islam is pretty simple. We just believe that there is absolutely one God. We worship Him, Him alone. We follow the prophets, and that's it. It's pretty simplified, right? right? We think that God, who is all-knowing and all-wise, has given us instructions and guides on how to live our lives and manage our affairs so that we can have success in this life and the next. Uh, one of the teachings in Islam, quick example, smiling is charity. Another one, he who does not show appreciation to the people does not show appreciation to God. So be kind, be good, help each other. Are those beliefs you're comfortable with? Yeah, yeah, that sounds, sounds good. Sounds reasonable, yeah, reasonable. right? Yeah. Uh, do you like logical reasons? Reasoning, or uh, have you read anything about philosophy, anything like this? No, because I, mean, I didn't. Know. I didn't go in, uh, in uni. I did do some philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Islam is very logical and rational. It simply teaches very clear things that there is God and God alone, who is perfect as He is. That he has no rivals whatsoever, and that his will and authority cannot be overpowered. So we worship this one God, obey his commands with sincerity, be just upon the earth, and God will grant us salvation via his mercy. So God wants you to have a good life. God wants you to help others in your community. Do, do these ideas interest you, or do you think that you know they don't? Me yeah. Because yeah. All, all I hear about Islam is like the negative stuff. Like violent stuff, bad yeah, stuff. Exactly. So one of the principles of Islam is la dirar wa la dari fi al Islam. There is no hurting of others or ourselves in Islam. Our principle, some of our princ foundational principles, is to be just in society and to forbid oppression. So God says, or our teaching at least is that. That God has forbidden zulum or oppression for himself, meaning that God will not oppress us. So how can we oppress each other? Are we greater than God to, to be malicious and evil towards each other? We value every life because God didn't simply press a button and we all randomly popped into existence. We believe that God chose to create each and every one of us personally and individually. So God created you as yourself. He has given you the liberty and the autonomy and the capacity to think about him, to read his scripture and to come to know him. Does that seem like a reasonable and just God? I, 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 I,
Or is that like a negative type of God to you? I mean, what you've just said is, sounds okay. So what are some of the negative things you've heard about Islam? And be free, we, we have no shyness here. We love, willing to take criticism, and we demand honesty, that's all. We won't yeah. be offended, I promise. I mean, negative stuff is like, uh, violence against idolaters. Yes. Like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, child, like, yeah. marriage, children, yeah. things like yeah. that. Um, well, let's 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 talk about let's talk about those two then. There is no teaching in Islam that we as Muslims are meant to kill people just for the sake of killing them, right? The Quran directly tells us in chapter two that one of the reasons we fight is for the protection of life. It's not to put, uh, oppress or to harm or to commit genocide. None of these things. In fact, it's my duty as a Muslim to protect your life if you get into danger. If I have a relationship with you, I am willing to put my life on the line to protect you and your family. But there's no teaching in Islam that says, just go kill people. <laughs> now, in every group of people, you're going to find some crazies, aren't you? Yeah. But we don't endorse those types of people, nor do we encourage their kinds of ideas. But there is a significant minority. I'll give an example of this. I think in the last year, there have been more school shootings in America than any amount of alleged terrorist attacks by Muslims altogether all throughout the world. So how significant can these attacks really be? We also have to keep into consideration that Muslims for a long time were colonialized. And as they've emerged with their own independent countries, they're going to be kinks in the system. They're going to be people that rebel and fight. This happens, but we don't see that Islam encourages this. We don't like the killing of people. So what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, there's like, I think part of the negative thing is mm -hmm. like, uh, he will come and say there's like uh, things in Islam, like the Quran, yeah. the, that says like uh, to attack people. That's brilliant. So what I do is I have a web, I have a YouTube channel, and the challenge I put to people who make this claim that the Quran teaches this is to show it to me. It's a simple request, right? Because I, as a Muslim, I read the book. Have you ever seen someone open up the Quran and show you that verse where it says to do that? You hear about it, but you don't see it. Is that accurate? I mean, it says that God is first. Like yeah. So, so what do you remember the verse? I can actually, I can actually show you one. Would you like to see it? Yeah, sure. So, this is one that you might have heard about. Um, j uh, can we? Is there a few step? Oh, there we go. Do you go? Why am I being filmed? Am I being filmed? Are you okay with this? Uh, sure. Okay, brilliant. Dawa. No, but to me this is just a conversation. Dawa means invitation. So invitation to have a conversation. So why is Dawa? You know, Dawa wise. You know. <laughs> okay. So sorry. Uh, it's just taking a moment to load here. Uh, let's just see. Uh, I'll just switch the Quran up then. So this is the Quran. I'm going to go to chapter 9. And most people, when they say that the Quran is violent, they tend to quote this verse, verse number 5. Is it okay if I read it out for you? And you can yeah. see it for yourself. And when the invaluable months, the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them, and sit in wait for them at every place of ambush. That sounds pretty violent, right? But we ask the question, who are these people that it's 
talking about and is this the, is this a command forever so we just read a couple of verses earlier does that seem fair so that was verse 5 let's go to verse 1 this is a declaration of this association from God and his messenger to those upon who with you had made a treaty among the polytheists the polytheists are called the mushrikeen or the polytheists of Mecca and the Muslims had made a peace treaty with them and in the night they ambushed a group of Muslims and killed about 20 of them so the next day this verse was announced you've broken the treaty therefore it is over but it isn't finished yet it says so it says to the polytheists travel freely throughout the land for four months understand this they've broken a treaty they've killed Muslims we have said that the treaty is done because you've broken it but we still give you permission to travel in the land freely for four months does that seem merciful so far yeah right does that seem like crazy it, it's very merciful right but it continues it continues but know that you cannot cause failure to Allah and that Allah will disgrace those who disbelieve in him meaning those who broke the treaty and were hateful against you Allah will disgrace you he will cause you to have dishonor how he continues and it is an announcement from God and his messenger to the people on the day of the greater pilgrimage that God is disassociated from those disbelievers and so is his messenger so if you those who killed us repent that is best for you but if you turn away you don't repent from the killing that you've done then know that you will not cause failure to God and that he gives glad to, uh, he will give tidings to those who disbelieve of a painful punishment meaning in the hereafter because you've killed innocent people and you've not repented you've not even apologized you will be punished in hell for this so travel in our land freely for four months and we also you may be punished in hell if you don't repent then that's when it continues accepted from this punishment are those with whom you made a treaty among the polytheists and they have not been deficient toward you in anything or supported those who killed you so complete for them the treaty indeed Allah loves those who are righteous does that seem fair? yeah does not sound that bad yeah. after reading the context yeah. right yeah. so I tell most people who tell us that the Quran is violent or evil just read it but it's not fair to read one particular verse and most times they don't even quote the entire passage they quote a small portion of it so here's a challenge I make to them uh, you know you said that you come from a Christian background right uh, yeah. right or that your, one of your parents are Christian is your uh, internet working uncle can you just do me a favor and quote for me Deuteronomy 2016 so there's one verse in the Bible that I give to Christians and I say I'm going to give you this verse in the Bible if you say the Quran and Islam teaches very bad violence show me in the Quran a verse equal to this or greater than it does that seem like a fair challenge right. so Christians who tell me that the Quran is violent and evil I show them a verse in their own book and I say in order for the Quran to be violent it has to be worse in violence than the verse I'm about to give you. Do you agree to that? Yeah. So this is in Deuteronomy, it's in the Old Testament, it's chapter um, 20, it's biblegateway.com. So you can go to yeah. any Bible website. So website any of them. Yeah? It's not like a Muslim for me though. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah not, I've, I've used it. Yeah, okay, great, brilliant. Right, so it's Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 16 to 18. It says, however, in the cities of the nations, the Lord your God is given you an, as an inheritance do not leave alive anything that breathes let me ask you a question do men breathe Sorry? do men breathe yes do women breathe do children breathe do babies breathe do animals breathe do plants breathe well, not, not plants maybe well yeah they maybe. absorb oxygen right oh, yeah. sorry they okay. release oxygen they are uh, 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 what do you they are taking carbon dioxide. My biology is not that great, huh? So, in order for the Quran to be a violent book, or 
more violent than the Bible, it must teach something equal to this or greater. This, however, among all the religious books in the world, you will not find a verse as violent as this, except in the Bible. What most Christians say is, that's in the Old Testament. But it doesn't matter if it's in the Old or the New. What matters is that God once commanded that. Does an innocent child deserve to be killed? A child, anything that breeds, and it says completely destroy them. Not just one group of people, but the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Have, have I misquoted it? Uh, I, I've seen uh, Bible verses that are very, very violent. violent. Is that, would you consider that to be violent? Yes. Does the context change anything there from what you've read? I mean, I'm not sure about the context or anything, but mm -hmm. I, I've seen Bible verses that are violent. Right. So would you say in comparison that from what you just read in the Quran, yeah. compared to what we just read in the Bible, is the Quran equally violent or more violent based on those passages? I mean, we're talking about just... That comparison, yes. Just to give you some more context to it, I'm sure you're supposed to yes. know about it. 1 Samuel 15, just to show you what is going to This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they went Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camel and donkeys, everything. Everything. There are many verses like that, just to give you, when it says anything that breeds, you can see the context of what that means to men, women, children, babies, infants, all infants. And in Islam, you can read, read the entire Quran, it never commands us to kill the innocent, nor does it command us to kill children, not once. In fact, it is haram, it is impermissible, it's a sin for a Muslim to torture an animal or to kill an animal unjustly. If it's for food, fine, but even if you torture that animal before you kill it for food, that is a severe sin, it's forbidden. So for us, Islam teaches something practical and peaceful at the same time. We don't have this, this, this violent teaching that's inherent to our beliefs. People are violent, our beliefs are not. So if I may put a question to you, from what you've heard about Islam so far just now, in this conversation, what do you understand about it now? Um, Is it more negative, more positive? I guess, I guess more positive. More positive? Yeah. Is it something you would be interested in or not interested in? Uh, I guess I'm open to it. Open to it? Yeah. So, all you have to do to be a Muslim, and we say this to anyone, and I'm saying it for the camera, I'm not asking you to be Muslim, but I'm just explaining what we believe. We testify that there is one God, and nothing is equal to Him. Most cultures and religions, they have two teachings when it comes to God. Either it is, they make humans into gods, or gods into humans. But Islam says no to both of these things. There is a distinction between God and humans. God is not like us. You have to eat, I have to drink, we need sustenance. God needs none of these things. I make mistakes, I don't uh, know the future. God is all-knowing. He makes no mistakes. God does not need to have children, nor does He need to create children for Himself. He is perfect as He is. If something is perfect, does it, do you add something to it? Do you take away from it? So this is the Muslim belief. And so for us, in four simple passages in the Quran, Allah tells us who He is. He tells us, say that He is Allah.
Allah, the absolute one. He is needed by all, but he needs nothing. He does not create children for himself, nor is he created. And that there is no creation similar, equal to a greater than him. That's just four passages in the Quran that every Muslim knows by heart. Uncle, can you say the passages from the Quran? Yeah, no, this is one passage with like four different sentences. Okay? Yeah. So in the Quran, the Quran is divided into sections, we call them surahs or chapters. Okay? They are all thematic unity giving a particular message. This is Surah 112 out of 114 chapters of the Quran. This surah is called the surah of purity or sincerity, where it describes God in a summarized way that your, your heart and your mind will not be able to reject it. Important thing, your heart, with all your emotions, and your mind, with all your rational faculties, will not be able to reject it. They start by saying, say, God is commanding, say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say that He is Allah, the one, the only, the unique. It encompasses quite a comprehensive meaning of this oneness. Absolutely unique oneness. Allahu Samad, the one who is eternally the sort of all, the one who everyone and everything needs, but he's totally free from them or independent of them. He is rich from anything else. Basically, he's absolute, he is independent, he's self-sufficient. He has no needs, but everyone needs him. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, but he is not someone who gives birth or procreates or generates or someone else. Neither is he born, procreated, generated, begotten, or begets. He's not someone that has parents and forefathers, or someone who gives or produces children and, and other babies, gods, right? like baby gods. You can't have that, right? So, no lineage this way or that way, from parents or children, nothing. It's totally, and, and there's a reason for this, and it ends by saying, And there is nothing comparable unto him, no comparison, no likeness unto him, in whatsoever way. So, if you think about God is like that, he's not like that. The moment you say, you imagine God something like this, God is unlike that. Because this is one of the characteristics of God who's unlike his creation. God created the creation in the image of the creation and how they are going to be. A human being doesn't look like a tree, right? Different. So we, we have been given forms and characteristics, but God did not create us in how He is. It's totally unique. As an example, God has perfect knowledge. I have knowledge, but my knowledge does not compare to God's knowledge. My knowledge is weak, it's limited, but His is eternal and it's all encompassing. Uh, God is powerful. I am powerful powerful as well, but is my power equal to God's? No. So we say that that God has nothing similar to him whatsoever, and that's what makes him unique, different. Let's explore a little bit more, yes. if I may, yes, please. about this chapter of the Quran, why I said your heart and your mind will not be able to reject it or deny it. I mean, you might deny, but you can't reject it with sound, reasonable self, because you have to be totally unre unreasonable to deny it. If we are here, there has to be an originator. Because it cannot be that at the one point in the past, absolute nothingness. Because absolute nothingness doesn't have any energy, any power or anything, right? It will not be able to do anything because it doesn't even exist. There's nothing. There was nothing. So that means there has to be always something because we are something here now. And that, hmm? and why, that's why people who don't believe in God. They believe the universe is always there. Always there. They believe something was always there because something has to be understood. Because if we are here now, there cannot be a time in the past where there was absolutely nothing. Because from absolute nothing, you get nothing. Do you follow that so far? If you have nothing to begin with, which has no energy, no existence, no power, no power then it won't be able to do anything. So from nothing will come nothing and that's it. It's like asking you to, uh, to, to, to raise your sixth finger on your right hand. Can you do that? You can't, right? Because it doesn't exist. So if there is nothing, it can't do anything. So there must be something in order for us to be here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we, that means we have an originator and that originator has to be self-sufficient and independent and absolutely 
someone who is perfect in all the attributes because he will be existing by himself without a beginning because he has to be always there. If you're always there without a beginning, did you acquire knowledge? Did someone give you knowledge? Did someone give you power? Did they give someone give you any of the other attributes? Of course not. You will inherently possess them and there will be no limitations because there's nothing that limited it, these attributes. So God will be totally absolute in his attributes. Absolute means perfect in every sense. Without flow. And there cannot be more than one of those. Because if you have more than one of those, there will be conflict of will. More than one God. More than one of those absolute beings means there will be conflict of will, then there will be chaos in the universe and so on. Imagine now there is two of those gods. One of them says, what's your name? Uh, Robert. Robert. One of them says, Robert is a very nice person. I want Robert to stay here and have a conversation. And none of the gods says, I don't want Robert to be here. I want Robert to be just disappear right now. Both of them are powerful gods, all powerful gods. What's going to happen? You can't have both. Yeah. Maybe the gods like a little god. Hmm? Maybe it's like a lesser god. Uh, a lesser god is no god. When we're talking about god, god is only deserving to be called for, to that being who is absolute. absolute Anything else perfect. is not god. So you can't have a lesser god because it will be sin. It would be like sin, less perfect. Can you have a less perfect god? No. Because by definition, god has to be perfect. perfect. So all these lesser beings, lesser gods, are not gods. They're not even worthy of being called gods. Yeah. Right? So they can only be one god, and this one god is absolute. And if you have one, an absolute god, that means necessarily that he doesn't have any other creators or fathers, and he cannot have any other children or progenies because he won't be one anymore. Can God, if, can, can you think about it? Go That's right. Just summarizing that. So if he's one and only and absolute and doesn't have any parents or lineages, can there be any likeness unto him? Can there be any, any, any resemblance? He'll be unique, absolute. So that's what the Quran explains to us about who God is. Ask yourself, do you disagree with this concept in your heart and your mind? Is there anything about what we just said about this God? That God is an existent being who exists, himself being perfect in his existence. He is absolute in his attributes. He doesn't have any parents or any other creators or any other cause for his existence. And he doesn't someone produce his other progeny, offspring, and there's nothing like unto him. No one co-equal unto him. No co-equal. No, no, nothing. Yeah? Does that seem reasonable? It's reasonable. Logical? Rational? Yeah. What do you think about it in your heart? What does your heart say about it? I don't know. I don't know what but can you consult your heart and think about it sincerely? Because if your mind agrees with it, there's nothing to stop your heart from accepting it either. That's what we're asking. When you're searching about God, the God that your heart and the mind knows is the right concept of God is what you should be ready to accept. That's what we are just simply uh, inviting you to. Look into Islam and surrender to this God and say, God, of course you are my creator. I submit to you. I will listen to you and I will be thankful to you and be grateful to you. And of course, you listen to what God has said to his prophets and messengers. The final of them being, which prophet? Muhammad, peace be upon Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the final guidance that came from God, it's not the first guidance, it's the final book, final scripture, which is the Quran. Ah, so God has sent many messages, right? We have been told some of the names, even the names of the prophets and messengers, we are not told everything. Otherwise, it will be like a history book rather than a book of guidance. <laughs> so God has given us and says, okay, he, he did not leave a nation and he's going to punish them. He didn't say that. He says, no nation will be accountable unless there comes to them a messenger, a warner. And in fact, every nation, every community in the past, they had a warner. 
telling them who God is. Otherwise, you'll be unjust by making them accountable for their belief and actions. So we are told some of these prophets by name, and God says, okay, these are some of them. For some, he didn't mention them. But so we, anybody. in the past, it could be that the, this particular individual who's now considered to be like a, a special you know, person in a culture, it could have been a prophet, but they changed the religion, changed the message. And now we can't even see. Because as time goes by, sometimes people change corrupt things. and change and manipulate those messages because it goes against them and their interests. Yeah? So God sometimes sends another warner, another prophet, to the same nation because they've corrupted it. Or they may have killed that prophet. Like what happened to the children of Israel. God sent many prophets in many nations, uh, many persons to the same nation. But the last of them was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that we are inviting you to look into his life. It's because God is not going to send another prophet, another messenger. And there's a reason to it. Because we have come to a stage where we can receive this message universally and be recipient of that message. We all need to somehow say, oh, the message is not going to be acceptable to us or understood by us or not reachable to us yes. come to a point where this message will universally go to all places so for example he's from India I'm from South America you're from Asia right but yet God has united us here in England out of all places to hear the same message understand it and discuss it so we've reached a time where Muhammad peace be upon him has delivered that message 1400 years ago yet here we are preserving it, transmitting it, and sharing it. So just think about it. Uh, what's there to lose? Yeah? Yeah, I'll think about it. Sure. So we are inviting you, just remember this is our invitation, is to use your mind and your heart with critical thinking and accept Islam, which is the submission of your own self, surrendering your own self on your, your own ego, willingly and sincerely to the will of one true God and following and accepting Prophet Muhammad as his final messenger. Yes. Do your research. Yep. Do you agree? Absolutely. Do it. Absolutely. You can't just blindly believe in something because you can blindly believe this tripod has God. Right? So we are asking you to be critical thinking as some of the things that we have shared critically in terms of who God is. If you think that this indeed is the right concept, then explore more about the Quran and see what the Quran says about God and about you, about heaven, about hell, about the day of judgment, about life, about death. Because we are not here and that's the end of it. We are here for a test, we will die, but we will be resurrected again and there will be another life in which there will be no end of that life. We will be ever living, either in a place of happiness and joy and bliss and tranquility and peace, in paradise, in heaven, or in a place of torment and suffering and misery, which no one wants to go. We wouldn't want our enemies to go there. We don't it's want a, you to go there. It's an eternal place of torment. Who, do, who goes there? The one who deserves to go there. Those who, knowing the truth, they are stubborn and arrogant and they reject it. So we should not be in a position like those people who make themselves go to help us. We want to earn what we call, by our critical thinking, we want to have and be recipient of the mercy of God, in which we will be showered with this mercy so that we are going to paradise because we have accepted him as our Lord, our creator, our God, and Prophet Muhammad as our prophet and messenger. Right. Pleasure speaking to you. Robert, so my name is Mansoor and this is Ijaz. And Ijaz, and please, um, yes. you know, visit his channel. Um, do you have any cards? Yeah, I can give you a card if that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, our channel is called Dawa Wise. You can find in YouTube. Dawa Wise. There you go. Yeah. This is on the, on the other yeah. side. There you um, go. And there's lots of um, discussion. You can email us. You know, we have like conversations like this all the time online. You can come under a different name. You can don't even have to show your face. We just we even take emails. We just want people to read, understand, and if they accept it, believe. That's it. Then let's speak to you. Yeah. May, 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 you. May, may God open your hearts and be sincere as you are now and be someone who loves the truth and the truth will come to you. You just need to be a recipient of it. Okay? You take care. Take care, Raoul. Thanks. Welcome. May Allah bless you. Um, May Allah bless you. Um, that handshake was to the camera, no love here, EF Dawa number one.